you can draw a lot of real parallels between the movie and like what's going on. Like, yeah, we're all like, we all just graduated and we're going to a cabin trip in the woods. Right. All of the guys are going to move in together Yeah. in this area. Brian Except and in, I were late. Yeah. Because I was signing the lease on the house, so we were like a week behind everyone. So that whole B plot with you and him. Very like, real. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Stacked. Uh, this is different. These are two random strangers who you've never seen before. Okay. Uh, so who are you guys? What are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nervous laughter. My name is Matt Wasong, and <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. I did have to think about that, and I'm, I guess, the producer of a most atrocious thing. Right on. Um fellow Chapman grad. I don't know if that's anything that's ever mentioned, but uh, yeah, no, for context, uh, we all went to the same film school, same yeah. film school as Ethan, Brandon and Chris, who are not joining us today, yes. but we're all, we're, we're all very Chapman dearly along. missed all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm Max, by the way, yeah, Max Shepardson. Max. I also worked on most church thing. I did many things on the movie that I'm sure we'll go over, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where wearers of many hats. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, when I was watching the film and in the credits, like you guys like, it's your credits are all over like you're just in all different types of places like yeah. just filling in all these roles but um but yeah so today we have a uh, part of the box fort team here with us to talk about their new feature film a most atrocious thing it's a horror comedy about a group of recent college graduates who go on this graduation trip into the middle of the woods and uh they eat some like contaminated deer <laughs> meat and things things take a turn for the worst after that Pretty um much. and i don't want to give too much else away we're gonna go into a lot today um but yeah i originally saw this film at like a little friends and family screening back in <laughs> november of 2022 yeah and i went just because you know i've i've known you guys i've known the, the the whole team for a while and i wanted to i i've heard that you guys were working on this thing and it's like oh cool he rented out a theater and yeah we'll see what this is and I am not saying this because I know you guys, but I'm a huge fan of the movie. Thank a you. Huge fan. <laughs> this thing is an absolute blast. It's like a stoner comedy and like this like really gory, gruesome horror film like combined into one. And it's just it's just so much fun. And I'm super excited. To talk and that's about all it. we came here for. And I think we're done. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it. That's it. Go that's watch the clip. it. We're done. <laughs> um, but what is Box Fort? Like, who are you guys? Like, what what um, is Box Fort? How would you guys describe it? Yeah, so I guess, uh, so Box Fort started kind of as a, I feel like honestly in a similar way as what you were saying, how this podcast started, mm -hmm. um, is that it initially started as like a collective. It was a way for us to stay together, to continue to do things together. Mm -hmm. um, after we after graduated we graduate. in 2020, yeah. yeah. Right when the pandemic. <clears throat> right. Off. Yeah, and I yeah. think it also started too because we never got the screenings that mm -hmm. everyone else did. Every yeah, other for, year for their like thesis films and right. stuff like that. So we didn't have anywhere to put our stuff. Mm. Yeah. And none of our friends had anywhere to put our stuff. So everyone was just kind of like, what do we do? Like we need to find work, but there's no work because it's a pandemic. But also like I want to share my stuff, but there's nowhere to do that. So yeah. we were like, we could f create a place where everyone can like put their stuff and we can just kind of like house this and kind of like be a place where we can bring all the talented people we know together. Yeah. Nice. And so definitely like started from that and we were all like, oh, there's, you know, there's 10 of us. Each of us has three at the minimum like films or whatever that are of decent quality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so we we're like, let's just start posting this stuff and put it all together. And it was definitely also from like a probably like a mindset of like we're better together than we are like competing separately with one another. Like right. saw that a lot, especially leaving film school is like everyone – at a certain point in film school, I think it's very like, oh, it's like me versus everyone else. Yeah, it's just a race to like the very few opportunities that are available. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We were like, let's just do it together. But interestingly enough, too, over the years is like other people have started to come to us and like, hey, like, can I put my short on here? Can I do this on here? Can we do that? Right. And now I feel like what we're finding is that Box for now that we have our first feature, Ultimately, the goal to grow it into is a production company, a legitimate production company that makes feature films, television, and more. Um, and based upon our own personal taste, I think that's it's definitely leaning more towards like genre comedy focused gotcha. rather than like straight horror, straight yeah. drama. I think right? we all – and it being like a core of like 10 of us, we're all into different types of genres we figured out. So it's like we all can – 
tackle different things or bring in people that are right. like with our sensibilities and try to like make these projects happen. Nice. Yeah. And I, I think that's like what I loved about you guys is like, you, I think you guys were faced with like such an unprecedented <laughs> circumstance where you were going out into the world, like finishing school, like during the pandemic. And I remember like, I think I was talking to Christian Whitmore, who's yeah. one, he was like, your guys is like editor on this yeah. and like he he's like such such an awesome he guy did the color which looks yeah. fantastic yeah on it. oh yeah. my god he did some incredible work on and this and he played me in two scenes as well <laughs> did he oh yeah. wow yeah, I didn't know yeah that. he did this is your screen debut by the way yeah yes it, it, i guess the yeah credits going introducing. yeah introducing <laughs> that was song i, I think which was, was just a bit that we had at the beginning and it's stayed the entire yeah. time it's perfect because yeah. i i have been in other like <laughs> things it's technically inaccurate uh it's very yeah technically it's inaccurate there's a lot of bits um, that just like stayed all the way through and we're yeah. like sure i guess yeah yeah that, that's what people like i think like one of the things i love about the film is just um like there's a lot of like jokes <clears throat> that you guys have i think like the risk when you run with making a film with your friends is that there's just going to be all these like inside jokes yeah. kind of humor, but you never feel that when you're like watching this, like the audience doesn't feel excluded, Thank, thank you. which That's, I think like, <laughs> yeah. like everything that makes you guys laugh makes me laugh too. Okay, cool. No, that, that was like our biggest fear. I feel yeah. like, uh, releasing it was like, well, if nobody laughs. Then no, I mean, I think, fucked. I think like, I mean, basically, yeah, there's like a bit that, We've been able to do at some of the screenings that has been a very good. I won't say the full thing just in case, like we're able to do it more. Yeah, but it has to do with like a three D glasses bit. Yeah. yeah, and we realized that that's a very good like barometer of like will people understand this? Yeah, and it's a thirty second bit. We call it the three hundred dollar bit, <laughs> and uh, if people laugh at that, we're like, okay, this will be a pretty good crowd. Yeah, and I'm like, it's kind of. St- stood the test of time for our it's almost like a litmus test exactly like we're like respond. okay people like think this is goofy and ridiculous i think they're gonna understand most of this movie yeah, yeah. yeah. and and definitely a good tone setter too because i feel like a lot of people go into it some of our earlier trailers definitely don't give off the vibe of like oh this is more of a comedy than a horror film yeah gotcha. so we we have run into like and especially with it like coming out now which is interesting like we got a review from one guy and he was just like I thought it was going to be scarier and I was kind of disappointed that it was funny. Oh, Which is really? so fair. And like we <laughs> had uh, a really nice guy talk to us early on that was just like, I'm a huge horror fan. And like, let's say this showed up on like Shudder mm-hmm. and it was like zombie movie. I would be a little like, it wasn't yeah. really zombie movie, it was more of a comedy. And right. I was like, and we were like, that fair. is good to know. Like, yeah. thank you very much. Like we, we need to start. Cause I mean, we can go into it, but basically the, how it started, this was not supposed to be a comedy at all. Really? <laughs> it was supposed to be like deadly serious. And it started, we were talking about, you know, Boxford and everything and how it started. Over that time in 2020, we were like, okay, we're posting people's stuff. What else can we do? And we were like, let's write a script. We wrote a script for something that still may be made at some point by yeah. us, which was a really cool idea. But we basically had like a time stamp of when we were going to move out to LA because we were all over the country. Like right. all of us are in every single corner of the country, right. which is super cool. But we were like in October, let's move out to LA or November. Let's move back out to LA. But in October, let's go to Van Event has a family cabin in Colorado. Let's go there and shoot this thing that we are writing a feature. Okay, like, great. A few weeks in the, some of the guys start to get to the cabin mm-hmm. and pretty immediately they were like, yeah, the script makes no sense. It was written by like seven different people. And and like, it makes sense, but it's just like kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. It, what the hell do we do? And basically, I think they called you guys and they were just like, don't come right now. But like in three days, if you come, we'll have something written that we'll shoot. And we we're all like, okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because one of the things I was going to ask is like the inception of this project. And it's so funny hearing that this was originally supposed to be like a straight horror Yeah, film. we were like... We keep saying like it was like elevated horror, like yeah. eight twenty four, and like oh, we were like that was the like, goal. Yeah. Like okay. it comes at night, like type yeah. of yeah. Vibe. Like well, the original thing too is Christian Hurley, full credit to him, like had the idea of like he had just watched Creep, I think. Okay, and he was like that's low budget. They got themselves out there and they were able to make enough money to fund other features that they wanted to make. Right, and we're like that's not a bad idea. We have this location of a cabin. Yeah, and so. This whole situation happens with the script and whatever, and 
eventually he also had the idea of like, what if it's like the guys are in the woods and they ain't, they eat tainted rabbit. <laughs> and, 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 and and at least his retelling of it, everyone was like, that doesn't make total sense of rabbit, but I, we like yeah. the base idea because in this cabin in Colorado, deer are walk, walking around 24 oh, seven. Yeah. Like you'll walk right. outside and we like feed apples to deer. Like it's gorgeous. They'll just be there yeah. everywhere and during so the day and at night. Yeah. The other guys there were like, it makes more sense if it's a sense if it's deer. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just like went from there. Definitely. That's insane. Cause yeah. okay. Well, this kind of leads into something I wanted to ask is just all of you guys worked on this and I was just wondering, like, how you guys balanced creative input. <laughs> like, like in terms of, like, I'm sure, like, naturally, like, you know, creative yeah, disagreements yeah. would come mm-hmm. up. Did it ever feel like too many cooks were in the kitchen? Like, yeah. how did you guys, like, go about, like, it, yeah. creating something coherent when there's just so many creative voices in the room? It was definitely tough at first, like, figuring that all out. Mm-hmm. I think in, at a certain point, we definitely did get into a flow state, but I do think a lot of us did realize very early on that there were a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, there really, inherently were because yeah. I, I think no one wanted to like. No one wanted to be lead like, it. I am the director. Like, yeah. I am the right, one. right. Well, coming at it from a perspective of like we're friends first. Like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. there's always the classic trappings of like don't work with your friends. It's always gonna end up bad. It's yeah. like gonna be terrible. Um, which I mean, you know. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but no, we, we made it work, and I think at a certain point, like, and, and I mean, even from the beginning, I think a lot of us really rallied behind, like, Christian and Ben mm-hmm. being, like, kind of, like, the vision behind this all. Right. Like, they definitely were there with the core idea, um, you know, bouncing back to, like, the original movie idea. Like, it was very creep, very, like, there were two people, two people in it. In it. And it we was were all going to help out. It, oh, really? It yeah. was wow. just going to be Ben and Dylan. And that was the entire movie. They were also fully playing characters that were supposed to be in their mid to late thirties, if not older. So Ben had a beard. beard he was yeah. growing a beard. Which, like, at a certain point, I think all of us were just kind of like, "This doesn't, this doesn't work." Yeah, like for us now. Yeah, yeah. maybe one day, you know. But so still a cool idea. So pivoting at least <laughs> from from the start idea of like we're all going to be in this. Yeah, and then we kind of took it a step further and like you can draw a lot of real parallels between the movie and like what's going on, like. Yeah, we're all, like, we all just graduated and we're going to a cabin trip in the woods. Right. All of the guys are going to move in together Yeah. in this area. Brian and I were late because I was signing the lease on a house. So we were, like, a week behind everyone. So that whole B plot with you and him. Very real. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Or, like, during the sequence when we're talking, like, when we're, like, drunk and it's, like, the whatever, like, the montage and we're outside on, like, the camcorder and stuff and we're, like... Oh, we should have gotten like the Van Nuys house for parties. Like the Van Nuys house was a very real thing that we were considering at that point. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Wow. <laughs> we were like, damn, should we do the Van Nuys house or the Corning house? And yeah. There were certain points and kind of, I think, like a reluctance from one of us to be like, I'm the leader of this thing. And because of that, it ended up being at first initially even like, <clears throat> you know, because we were also working all day and yeah, night. Yeah. So it'd be like, hey, like Christian's just going to go sleep and like, one of us is going to figure, this, figure out. this thing out. But it wow. also was super helpful, I will say, in the way that there was a lot of us. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, someone can be like cooking us dinner while these two guys are planning that shot wow. for later while they're filming this shot. So yeah. like after dinner, while we're eating, they'll tell us what the thing is and they filmed it on their iPhone. So we'll know what that shot is for after dinner. Exactly. I was going to say, yeah, because there's some like really impressive stuff in here, like some shots like this. One of the things that blows me away is that considering this is just you guys hanging out in a cabin together, like how professional it looks. And yeah. I remember seeing there was like, I, oh man, I, I, I hope it, one of you guys still has the clip, but there's like a one tracking shot where they're walking out on the patio yeah. and you guys are like handing each yeah. other the camera and all that. <laughs> and it's just like, it's such a beautiful thing because it's like pure collaboration at its yeah. finest, you know? And yeah. And I think that was like, the benefit of it is like everyone would throw out ideas when we were like in a rut and then we'd be like, that's the one. Let's yeah. do right, that. Right. The good thing was we had equipment. So like Will had this Ronin and mm-hmm. Christian and Ben both had these Da Vinci cameras. And yeah. Like we were able to max out what we had, mm-hmm. which helped a lot. Yeah. They had like, that was the bit, like we had like the two black magic, six Ks, four Ks right. or yeah, whatever, yeah. like bunch of tripods Elliot was like shaping light with like one thing of cine foil that we had, nice. and then we had no lights. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure. Just like Walmart, which is like, like Walmart lights, yeah, wow. and bed sheets. Uh, we were talking about how you guys like just 
put together like all these like different resources to make this thing happen. And one of the things I want to talk about is this guy right here. So how did this puppet come to be? Because it looks awesome and it looks awesome in the movie too. I think it was like the summer of 2022. We were like, okay, we have like X amount of shots that this deer needs to be in and we'll just do VFX. Yeah. And that idea came and went when we realized that it would be very expensive. It was like, 15 yeah we got quoted like fifteen thousand dollars and oh even God. that was like the homie, generous that was the homie rate <laughs> yeah wow uh, so it, it was pretty crazy discounted. and then we we're like okay yeah. what are other options and uh that's where yeah matt's idea came in caddyshack came on at a bar that i was at yeah um and you know so there's obviously the gopher yes in that movie oh absolutely like iconic puppet and then also i love the movie uh gremlins yes gremlins yeah. like one of my favorite movies. well gremlins 2 and also gremlins but gremlins 2 is <laughs> gremlins 2 is is so good so Hidden good. masterpiece so good the the vegetable gremlin oh my god <laughs> um but yeah so you know it was like what if we did this practically? It'd be a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did some research online, but I ended up finding this company called Only Dinosaurs, which, uh, as their name would lead you to believe, they do not only make dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, a little misleading in that Very sense. misleading. Yeah. And so they essentially manufacture, like, uh, dinosaur puppets and animatronics for theme parks. Okay. So, like, the stuff that you'll see at, like, Universal Studios right, for, right, like, right. Jurassic Park. Oh, sick. Um, and so they had like certain animals, mostly like prehistoric animals. They had like saber tooth tiger or woolly mammoth. And um, I think this is actually based off of more of like a velociraptor sort of puppet. But we were like, we want something that's like this size. And then we sent them reference photos. And we were like, here's a real life deer that we want it to look like. Yeah. And here's another real life deer that we want it to look like. And they just came back with like fur options and stuff, and they they threw the whole thing together, and it, it actually got shipped over from China. So in a big crate, big ass, <laughs> really big showed ass up in our. What, what was like the day the like? Stuff? Like, did you guys like all get together to look at this thing, or was it yeah. kind of like like what was the first I think, reaction? I think Matt was at work, so we were like, the crate is here, and they're like, we have to wait, and then we yeah. opened it up, and we're like, holy shit, okay, I guess this is this is what we got. Like, let's yeah. see if it works, and we did a few shots, and we're like, okay, this is gonna this be works. pretty goofy. This is gonna be pretty fun. Yeah, so they sent this over, and I mean, it was way cheaper. It just, you know, we had to plan it a little bit in advance. Like, it was, sure, there was a sure. month, about a month and a half of lead time, mm -hmm. like getting this thing made and shipped over and stuff. Um, and then just getting the shots we needed, various, yeah. yeah, various places to kind of like double as places in Colorado. Yeah, right. We, we had already done like plates and stuff too yeah. for like a lot of stuff. We're like, okay, so like the shot kind of has to look like this. Yeah. And so we actually went to, um, Kenneth Han, I think is the name of the park. Okay. And it's over like, like near City, Culver, yeah. Baldwin Hills area. Mm -hmm. And there's a river there and there's some bushes. And if you hike up high enough into the mountain, there's like some bigger trees. And so we just did that. So like in the shots where you see like Ben or somebody like looking at the deer, like he's in Colorado. Yeah. But the, the deer, deer is in California. That's insane. Yeah. We want to do a oh cut at some point because of the timeline of how we shot this. Because it was basically that first trip to Colorado. Right. And very other subsequent trip, trips after where like, you know, that first trip we thought we had a feature and then we cut it together and it was 25 minutes. Yeah. So right, like, okay, right, right. we got to shoot more and like do all this stuff. And um, I think at one point Ben did make a cut where it was like, I think he called it dated and unrated where in between shots, it was like, this is October, 2020. This reverse shot is, it, this is October, 2020, Colorado. The reverse shot is December 2022. Oh in, my God. In California. And, and then, then it like, cuts to Max, and that's actually yeah. 2020. Like, that's also like 2023 or whatever. And, and it like, cuts back, and it's like 2022 again. And then it like cuts it. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. I would love to see just like the rough string out of this thing. It's pretty like nuts. Production. Yeah. Notes. I think that was one of the things we wanted on the bonus feature. That'd be sick. Like, I think at some point we'll put, post like the timeline and stuff yeah and just like that'd be awesome just like how it looks because it yeah. was it was a lot of different trips and it was it was really cool that it all like worked out yeah like a month before that friends and family screening which was like our first hard deadline yeah ben to his credit was like i think there needs to be more i think it actually first came from his mom which was awesome oh really i was okay. like i'd love to see more of max and brian <laughs> <laughs> and we're Thank like okay we could add like another scene so sure. we added the scene of us uh in the car yeah which was fun. And then it was like, I guess we could add another 
like finish the storyline. Yeah. And Ben, who was editing the bulk of it at that time, was like, I think there needs to be like a climax where it's cutting between everyone. Oops, yeah. Sorry. Cutting between everyone. Which, by the way, is a fantastic <laughs> sequence. Yeah. Because you have like one with you and Brian in the tent and like the whole zipper gag. Yes. And then you have like the gruesome kill with you where like the antlers go through your head with the yeah. singing fish and all that. And it's like all these different like little sequences coming together and it's just a fantastic sequence and it, it, this is all credit to ben we were like hey man like in the perfect world yes we can do this but i don't think we have time yeah. and yeah. we basically made a full calendar and we were like okay there's only one weekend that if we get everything done we can film it and yeah. we'll have a week to edit it and we were like it literally wow. was like it said like if we are good boys we can film yeah. <laughs> and, and being like producer too it was like yeah. kind of like i was like hey like like if you don't do this, like I'm, I'm going to veto this. I'm going to say like, no, we're not doing this for the sanity of everyone yeah. involved. Because right, Max right. is staying up every night working on the score, trying to get the score finished. Yeah, Ben and I were in like a crazy flow state yeah. of like, I think it was like th two to three months where he was editing. Yeah, he'd send it to me. I'd score it. We'd like who would be go, directly like like below we were him. like below each other, so I could hear him. He could hear me, and he was just like, and then we'd watch it and give each other notes, and then go back and do it again. Wow! And then, and then mm -hmm. this whole thing was happening. And initially, the stuff in the tent was Brian, supposed to be Brian and I in the motel. Yeah. And then, like instead of the deer going through the tent, it was going the deer was going through a window, and like it was a whole thing. Right. And the deer like destroyed. I and the hotel and room. and it it was, if we had money and a budget and all this stuff, like absolutely we could have done it yeah and it would have been awesome right but right. i was kind of like if, if we're and it looked like we were going to be able to film it at that point like we got like most of the stuff done and i was like if we're really supposed to film this like the true nature of brian and i when we were meeting you guys is we were staying in a tent <laughs> and we were like oh we could just reformat this in a tent right do right. it in our garage and that's so much easier we can control the whole environment right right and so we, we already opted had the tent too so we opted for that and it turned out so well and it's like that sequence is like i think the coolest thing in the movie yeah but like another fun. thing is like i'm just so impressed by the by the makeup work and the like special effects that you Thank guys you. did yeah so <laughs> like so like how did you guys like pull that off like did you have a makeup artist on set uh no it was it was us it was max it was and you I. two it yes was, it was oh my god of us. <laughs> and um i'm kind of i guess the only one out of the two of us that has makeup experience -ish. i mean i have two sisters yeah. so i was like around makeup <laughs> sure so sure. like that was my experience yeah but that's being like i know what the... the makeup is used for yeah, yeah general familiarity that's makeup yeah. with like... the intent to look good though. <laughs> yeah. this is not um this so and you know we were totally lucky in the fact that we were filming for the first bit of it uh during like october and there was one big store nearby was a walmart 45 minutes away okay and they had a ton of halloween stuff so including like you know the cheap little prosthetics and the right the, the red like those little stacks of like different reds and blacks and different colors yeah, like yeah, yeah. for bruises or for zombie make so we like just bought a bunch of those bought a bunch of q-tips and stuff and that was really mm -hmm. all the makeup and like i knew a bit about makeup from like you know, I was kind of into it a little bit growing up, like more so just like, you know, prosthetic bullet holes. Yeah, and like yeah. Cool shit. Right, yeah. right. Cool and shit. Cool you shit. Know? Not, no. not like makeup. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, no. No, but so like I also knew the basics of like blending and sure, being like, you got to sure. start with the white layer. Yeah. You got to go over that with the skin tone and then you go with your shadows and your blacks and your purples and your reds. Yeah. Um, And so kind of built all that up and like a lot of the wounds and stuff are actually just like toilet paper dipped in liquid latex like wow you know Stuck added to add some texture yeah. and stuff yeah. which is cool um and it was nice to have other i think like i did like the grant yeah. scratch like the when the the, the big bite on grant's yeah, neck the and then big the, bite the scratch, and dylan's scratch and it was just good to have like the other guys too where like dylan is very good at stop motion so he knows a lot about like color blending mm -hmm. and gotcha so we were like doing the wound on him and i was like okay that looks pretty good and he was like i feel like like it's going to be close up. So like this color should be deeper or whatever. Like, oh, okay. So like we had the time, thankfully because it was our own time. To, right, like, right. Right. Really go in and be like, okay, this is good enough. And then when we shoot it, we could shoot it in a way where it looks much better and yeah. more real where we like yeah. pour flake blood on it. And then it looks like really like wet and gnarly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing too is like, it is, it was Ben's like family's, cabin it yeah. is owned by a, a member of his family no pd it was just is, that's how it yeah. looks that's how it looks yeah. that's yeah. how it looks but also that being said too is like we can't be like 
squirting blood everywhere. Like, no, <laughs> no, crazy. obviously. Um, and like also like just can't be like ruining this shit that's like been in his family for multiple yeah. generations and was like oh sure built by I think like the father of the woman who currently owns it, and like um, so we had to be like very careful. And then that kind of goes into like the you know there's like definitely shots where there's like a ton of blood on the floor like right when, you know, yeah Christian's oh yeah on the ground like there's a huge blood pool and that was like a blood mat that i made from scratch which was cool and like that was crazy just did a lot of testing with that like oh my you know God. i knew that they're made of like silicone and so i was like i first started with silicone so i bought like a tube of silicone at walmart there's like yeah. a week leading up to like that scene we knew we had to shoot where matt was just like experimenting we're yeah. like we're no, all like we need blood. all right like do your thing we're yeah. like, i have no <laughs> yeah. idea what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah so first with like silicone and like red stuff and that just like smelled really bad and was like sticking to my fingers and i didn't like it and it didn't really <laughs> yeah. dry also because it was cold outside yeah and like I like we're all living in this room together. I'm not going to air out a bunch of silicone in the sure, room. We're sure, all sure, get sure. Super high. Um, <laughs> so instead, you know, opted for like, well, what else could we use? Oh, like so, used we ended up using Elmer's glue. Okay. With red food coloring in it, and you mix it all up and you pour it out into a mat, and like so, we poured it out into like a plastic tarp, let it dry for like they needed like two and a half days to dry. Wow. But at the end, like you had this thing that you could peel off and was just like a big floppy oh, that's so like cool. blood mat. Yeah. So we just smack that smack on the that ground, down and put his head on stuff it. Stuff on top of it. Boom. And then it looks like yeah, it real looks enough. Perfect. Yeah. That's incredible. Man. Yeah. And all of this is like just Walmart supplies. Oh, entirely. Walmart. Even the lights too. Like we didn't really have lights and Elliot uh had Elliot's a big uh, Deacons fan. So yeah. he was like listening to something and they were like, oh, there's a way to like bounce light where you basically just need like a few can lights and it, it even works on like a big bed sheet. And he was like, okay, let's just get a huge like yeah. king size bed sheet, a few can lights that are super powerful or that we can control. Yeah. And that'll like light up a ha half of a room or whatever. So they gave it like oh a really God. cool tone too. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just like, I love this stuff. I love like just resource filmmaking. And I think that's like one of the strongest things about this movie is that it's so clear that it's like all your guys' brain power, like coming in, like bringing <laughs> yeah, in all yeah. your different, like just little niche areas of expertise is like, okay, like you're doing the score. You have this like background with like special effects makeup and yeah. like you guys are like all throwing it into a pot and like you get yeah. this like awesome movie like, out of it, works. which is yeah. So cool. And it was also nice too, I mean, especially like working together as well as like, you know, this film was definitely like the vision behind it and the driving force was definitely like Christian and Ben. Yeah. But also like they were spread very thin because Ben was also focusing on like being the lead of the movie and sure. having to act in it. Oh, and yeah. Christian yeah, yeah. was working on not like running himself into the ground because he had been up for 48 hours trying to like get this stuff done. Oh my God. So when it came to certain things, we were like, you know, like, Hey, like you take a break, like we'll do this thing. So like they would go in and sleep, you and, tap in and, and like we would yeah. tap in and like, you know, I'd do like, Oh, like I'm going to do the garage scene. And like I'd go and we'd film that and we'd gotcha. go do that and then come back and show it to him. He'd be like, you know, we need pickups here and there. And wow. Stuff, that's so. And I think like that like requires a lot of trust Mm -hmm, amongst yeah. you guys and like knowing like hey listen like because i know like from my projects like one of the things i struggle with is like being able to take that step back and like letting someone tap in and like yeah. having that trust in somebody yeah. and i think that's like incredibly yeah. admirable of you guys like to i mean yeah that. i mean i think it definitely points it can get difficult where it's mm -hmm. like if we have shot stuff and done scenes and some of us are like uh oh, maybe we can cut that and somewhere like oh i actually like it could stay in and then it's kind of like Okay, then what do we do? Yeah. Like how to, so it, it's <clears throat> it was good in the end to have kind of like yeah. Christian Ben too to kind of like guide that to be Definitely. like, no, like I think we're going to keep that or like, no, we're going to cut that part. Yeah. So it was right. nice to have that at the end. But it was it, it, it was nice too to like, you know, best idea wins yeah. at some point. Pretty but much. Like, gotcha. it, it is. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. also knew kind of, you know, obviously going into it, we're like, we all have the same education. Yeah. So yes. it's like, yeah, that's literally. that's the baseline. Like I trust that everyone else there knows how to use a camera, knows how to do yeah. this, knows yeah. how to do this, because I know how to do that. And I think we were in the same class. Yeah, yeah. Just like be, also just like that and being friends for at that point like five years. Right, right. We're friends because we have similar sensibilities and stuff. So like we can trust that like, sure, like Matt's in another room doing this like whole garage bit, and that we come in and we're like. 90% sure we're going to like the idea. Right. So it's like, it's right. cool. It's like, unless he says something, we're all like, uh, maybe I could like change this way. <laughs> and 
everyone would be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Like, all right. Easy. And then you go with it. Yeah. That's, that's like so awesome, man. And it's like cool because it's like, I think it really plays into the film. Like your friendship really comes through on the screen. That's good. Like that yeah. dynamic, like the chemistry is so It didn't there. at first. So, yeah, no. <laughs> there was really a cut did. of the movie that. Like pre Max and Brian even. Yeah. Being like the and there was, wow. there was a whole point where like we watched it and we we're like, okay, it's good. Ben and Dylan might fully hate each other. I don't know why they're friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Like, I yeah. think that adds but then to it. it because, but, then like, it, but then we were able to like shape it in a way of like redoing some scenes and just right. we're like, okay, no, these are yeah. good friends. Tinkering with yeah. it in a way. But like, I think like, especially with your character, Matt, like we, everybody has that like one friend where like every once in a while it's like, man, we put up with this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like it adds to that dynamic, you know? Like I like the imperfections between yeah. you guys. And I think an overarching theme in the film, and I don't even know if this is what you guys are intending, but like you have this trip amongst all these college graduates and during that time, like right out of school and you guys were in such a crazy position yeah. going into COVID and like, yeah. I don't know, like you, you come out of college and like you view people differently. In this case, mm -hmm. you know, people become zombies because they tainted <laughs> yeah. deer meat but like there is that like sentiment of like things are changing you know ben ben's character yeah. is like trying to make the lead to nyu and he's afraid to tell dylan mm. and like there's conflict there um and i think that is really relatable for people like within our age demographic or anyone that goes through change yeah i mean know? i think that's like more realistic than what we were initially trying to do which was like be 35 year olds right but, right but i think it just came from like real stuff that was yeah. happening and like okay how would we react if that was really the case like, yeah if this was really happening and like mm -hmm. it's funny now because ben and dylan now moved to new york together which is funny yeah, they live together. <laughs> oh really they, live together. Wow. they both live in new york yeah with will uh <laughs> and it's me max and, and christian Woodmore and brian who live in la yeah. gotcha so um it's just very funny how like it that all worked out but it it, it definitely was like yeah like what i think our things that are actually happening mm -hmm. in our lives post-graduation what are fears that we have right like what are what's all this stuff and i think you know with a group of 11 guys anyone would be scared to be like actually i'm going to do this completely other thing yeah and go in mm -hmm. my own way right because yeah. it, it's just so different like that transition like i called it the post-grad slump where yeah. it's this period of your life where it's like you've had this structure this school structure your entire oh, totally. life and then out of nowhere like Nothing. the rug swept out from under you and it's like all right you're on your own yeah and i think that really comes through in this film now granted maybe in an unorthodox way but i think that's there's a heart to this film i think we were all certainly feeling that way too yeah because i think like Definitely. what kept us together was us like of like literally living together and yeah like being making this thing and right. like doing all that but uh, yeah there's definitely like yeah finding structure as an adult which is weird yeah and i think yeah in some weird way this was probably the most structured thing we had for the last four years yeah it's, really it's like we have this thing that we're always going to go back and finish and yeah. right yeah one thing, total pivot, but there's a cameo in here by yes. Mr. Lloyd Kaufman. Crazy. Who is, that's a deep cut for people who are big physical media collectors and horror fans. Uh, he's, what, the creator of Troma Videos, yeah. which is a distributor of like B films and like horror and like very like just niche films that otherwise probably wouldn't get mm -hmm. nearly as much publicity. Yeah, and like, how did that happen? <laughs> I mean, that was fully mapped, but like, yeah. I think... I had really only heard of like the toxic Avenger of like, Oh, it's just like crazy eighties movie. Right. And that's all I knew. And then you keep going down the line of people that he's kind of like helped out along the way. It's crazy. Like yeah. he helped fund, uh, uh, the South park guys when they did cannibal, the musical yes. yeah. that yeah. they, it was distributed through trauma. Mm -hmm. That was how they first got their thing out there. And then he, James Gunn. James too. Gunn was his like assistant, and then like wow. directed. Tro a bunch Romeo of... and Juliet was one of James Gunn's first. Yeah, I think, directed like, feature his... film writing. Yeah, credits. exactly. Right. And so he's helped a bunch of people through the years. And as we were looking for references, as this thing was kind of morphing into more of like a horror comedy and like right, right, a zombie comedy, we were like, oh, Troma is like they've been pretty successful with this stuff. Like, I wonder how we get that out there like let's see if we can reach out yeah and yeah Tromo was the company that we were like oh like they have their own streaming service like this is definitely like up their alley yeah kind of which seems cool and you know i was thinking of like people who we could try to get advice from and i wasn't even wasn't even seeking a cameo it was literally seeking advice wow so i i cold sent an email he also has a video i will say that we were talking about a lot called like how to make a 
movie for I forget the exact it's name, like, but he he's like a DVD that's like how to make a movie for like ten thousand dollars. And it's like that's literally and that was literally we us. Yeah. So we were like, okay, let's see if yeah. we can cold email him and get some advice. So yeah, cold emailed him was just like, hey, like made this movie. We're young guys, and we had like a advice. mock trailer at that right, point. Yeah. yeah, you know, just what are your thoughts on you know getting your movie out there and trying to make money off of it? Yeah. Um, no response. Um, okay. And then like two or three months later, I get a phone call one day from like an unknown number. And, you know, at that point I was like an assistant. So I was like, okay, I pick up every phone call I get. Right. I'm like, I like, you know, my song, uh, who is this? He's like, it's Lloyd. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I was like, Lloyd who? <laughs> <laughs> you were so unprepared for this. I was like, I, I, okay, like, thank you, Lloyd. Like Lloyd who? He goes, Lloyd Kaufman. And I was like, oh, yes. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know you. Um, and he's like, I, he's like, sorry for the delay. He's like, I saw your email. And he goes, I watched your, he goes, I watched the trailer, your, the trailer yeah. for your film. I think I honestly might have sent him like the 30 minute cut of the film. Yeah. Mm. And he was like, I watched your movie. He goes, he goes, I loved it. He goes, it's perfect. He goes, it's amazing. He goes, the name is incredible. He goes, I think we, I think they were like, he's like, oh yeah, we just finished up another project. He goes, I, that movie's going to be called the worst movie ever made. He goes, I think, I think it's the perfect title. It's grabbing. It's amazing. It's genius. You should stick with the most atrocious thing. It's perfect. Yeah. And then he goes, he goes, what can I do for you? And I, I was like, I really don't know. I'm like, we were just like trying to ask for advice and stuff. And he's like, yeah. well, you want me to film a cameo? And I was like, yeah, that'd be <laughs> And we had awesome. kind of had this idea of like, the ending bit or this like through line of this place called Vinny's Venison. Right. Yeah, where right. like the guys eat the deer and Brian and Max eat deer at the end, like this kind of ending yeah. thing. We're like, he's Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was like, awesome. Very quickly. We're like, he's Vinny. Yeah. It's legendary. And this was also fully like, definitely like in the time when it's like, Oh, like we're a couple months before our friends and family screening yeah. at this point. Like, yeah, this is like down the line. And we had a Vinny Venison, which was Noah Marger. Um, yes. Who yeah. you know. Of course. And so he was our Vinny Venison for most the entire process of the film. Yeah. And we were like, yeah. well, what if Lloyd is Vinny Venison and Noah's, Noah's Vinny Jr.? Vinny Jr. Uh, yeah. And we were able, we were like, we actually could totally make that work. We just cut a few lines of dialogue that Noah says. Yeah. yeah. Completely. So, work. so, you know, sent him a costume, sent him a script because he was in New York. We were all in LA and he recorded the whole thing himself um, <laughs> in, in the basement of his studio. And it was, uh, I mean, he he hit us with some really great lines. A lot of that stuff was improv, just based off of like rough structure. Right? Did you um, send him like any script? Or we any had outline? like a beat sheet of like, can you like hit these lines? Like, gotcha. here are the lines and say stuff in this vein. Okay. And then he mm -hmm. hit those lines, and then just said some wild shit, crazy shit. He was like, "Oh yeah, the deer drank out of the Tromaville River, and that's why we're, <laughs> like the river from Toxic well, we, Avenger." Yeah, I'm like, we that's had awesome. at one point yeah. we were like, "Okay, technically we're canon in the Tromaville universe." <laughs> I'm like, that's freaking awesome. We want that. But at the same time, like, probably not. It was one of those uh, things too where we had it and we're like, okay, that doesn't really make sense. Like, like, okay, like okay. Yeah. yeah. But it was really cool. And he was just kind of just very helpful in that regard. And also just like him being willing to lend his name to this just added kind of yeah. just like an extra layer of like well, – yeah, professionality I think to the sure whole thing. too yeah. because we at this at the point that we like got in contact with him we knew kind of like the audience that would this was for yeah I think like yeah. a lot we of had crossover. spent so much time with this thing we're like okay I think we get the audience now and we're like it, I feel like it is that type of person so like having his kind of like blessing through it we were like that's awesome that's yeah. so cool that he was like down to help us and he was like i love what you're doing we're like all right cool yeah. but yeah like definitely like for that generation and that audience of people who just like kind of love the weird and the wild and the crazy and the just like the abnormal and and yeah. so that was it was really fun and, and that's definitely like the vein in which this is is like it is really weird yeah it's like a lot of our humor is really weird and a lot of the horror and the kills is really weird and the deer is really weird yeah um but so i think it would have been a completely different movie if it was like a full vfx deer yes oh but it was absolutely. also like back to that like there was things we wanted the deer to do that like you could really only do if you had it in a puppet form. right right so i think it all worked it out for the best yeah. yeah, and and like the puppetry adds like a, a sense of tangibility and yeah. like you know a, a beautiful thing about you know films of the past, films of like you know that that flavor is that there are like the emphasis on practical effects mm -hmm. and like it adds like 
even if it's like not photo realistic, there's mm-hmm. character added to it. Yeah, when you I mean have that, that was, practicality. That was the thing too. Like once we had it, we we're like, okay, we could really turn this up and like have it make like noises. <laughs> like, yeah. Do weird things that we couldn't do if it was VFX, dear, because it would kind of be like this weird line of like how serious do we take this yes and how like yeah. goofy can we do it yeah i think it also kind of lends to making it seem like a fuller character mm-hmm. than something that's just like there and even though it's not a real deer it's a real thing yes that's there and exactly I think that helps uh help audiences like resonate with it more and like connect to it more yeah. no absolutely um Going into that, I want to talk about. I had you guys kind of prep some like references. Some, oh, like, yeah. Some of our favorite like oh, horror I comedies. Yeah. So I want to talk about like horror comedies that like you guys love or like just films that you would, you guys kind of looked at as like yes. inspirations while making the film. Like I definitely have a few that it reminded me of, but I want to hear from you okay. guys. Like, what yeah, you we have on your list. Basically, we asked some of the other guys today too, and we like broke it down because yeah. it was essentially like. Like I said before, going in when we thought it was going to be like elevated horror, A24, yeah. it was, uh, like it comes creep. at night and okay. creep. Yeah. And then once it was kind of like, okay, this is more of like a comedy. We were kind of saying the whole time, like, okay, we want it to be like evil dead meets super bad. Okay. And that's, then, that's a really good cross. Yeah. And then we came across like, uh, Tucker and Dale and other versus evil that's a good yeah one. oh a, i had that on my list yeah. that's Crazy. literally the first film yeah. i ever uh, written down yeah. and then like cabin in the woods cabin yeah. in the woods yeah like super bad we were like okay that's a really good reference for ben and dylan's relationship as like yes. two best friends Shaun of the dead we wanted it to be that kind of like the action of that and specifically for like some scenes with grant and at the yeah. neighbor's house and also at the neighbor's house too which i forgot fully we were like how do we block this scene in Ben and Dylan who are huge fans of the last of us, the video game. Yeah. This was before the TV show came out. They're like, Oh, this scene could be like, we could do it kind of like that. And there's fully like a reference to the last of us in there. Nice. And then it, for Will's death, Will Will said he wanted to be like Paul Blart. There was like a scene in Paul Blart. Where he gets like decimated. I know by exactly. Something. I know exactly what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about. That he, he goes, kind of, I did like, not goes, expect to bring up Paul Blart. Yes, this, he gets like hit and then just goes flying. Yeah, he goes flying. <laughs> like it was like <laughs> human distance. That plus like Raimi Spider Man when like the oh the whole, like, yes yeah because that's octa, what I was thinking like, with scene. the Green Goblin and he goes oh or what yes is, yeah Will yeah, yeah. Defoe. <laughs> oh like yeah 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 that moment's totally in there. So that and then. I think also, oh, and then like this is the end where like that should be like our like ensemble reference. True, yeah. And then it turned into like post production references. And I mean, I'll fully for myself, I was not like a big horror movie fan. I've never really been a big horror movie fan until I really like met these guys in college and then specifically making this movie. Yeah. I was like, I got like a huge education on it. And because I'm much more of a comedy person. Right. So it was cool to kind of like mix that stuff together. And then. Kind of after the fact, in post, we were like, we watched a bunch of movies to be like, okay, how do they mix drama and comedy? Like going from like a serious scene back into a funny scene. Right, right. And then I have so many of these written down. Uh, We were like Boy Scout Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Okay, that's that's Christopher Landon, right? Yeah. 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 And then Cabin in the Woods, what Matt said. And then it was also crazy too, because we made this over like three years. So a bunch of movies came out that we were like, Okay, oh, yeah. we're not like dissimilar to that. Yeah, like that's yeah, pretty yeah, cool yeah. that we could like like cocaine bear. We're yeah. like, yes, absolutely. I feel like we hit like yeah. a weird tone like that. The, the please don't destroy movie. We're like, okay, yeah, buddy comedies are kind of in, right? And right. then uh, there was like leave the world behind that Netflix one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. that that was yes. purely just like there's a scene where she walks outside and there's like a hundred deer and it's like oh that was that gonna is- be the <laughs> ending at one point yeah. yeah. Which, uh, again, we were like, we can't yeah, do that. Yeah. No, you can't. And, of course, again, like, you know, Gremlins and Caddyshack also for, uh, for yeah, like, you know, the stuff. puppet stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like we'll also, like, shout out the YouTubers a little bit. Like, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, like, Freddie W, Film Riot, oh, Corridor Digital. Like, all of those guys in that entire, like, you know, cohort kind of of people who, while we were growing up in like middle school and high school, were like yeah. making these, oh yeah, like short films and like even like instructional videos on like how to do stuff. Like Film Riot had a lot of really good like yeah. tutorials. You know, how for, to do like a neck slash exactly. With like Christian found bucks. a TikTok the scene where the 
neighbors on the car at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have like a VFX shot from top down. And then there's a whole scene where like you see it driving from the side. And that's just a toy car on a treadmill. With like a I've thing seen on top of like TikToks yeah, of that. Yeah. I've seen those reels. And, and Christian where... was like, "I think we could do that as a shot," and it would just like elevate it a bit. And we're like, "Oh, let's uh, try it out." And yeah. we did it, and we're like, "Holy shit, it looks yeah. cool!" <laughs> um, but yeah, like all those, like you know, we would watch all the corridor digital stuff. Yeah. So we'd be like, "Ah, oh, this VFX looks terrible. Like we we can't do that." Like yeah, and yeah. then also just like you know, like watching them make mistakes and like learn things definitely helped Absolutely, a lot. Absolutely, yeah, and being um, able to make our own mistakes yeah. and go back and learn things, which was super helpful. Yeah. Right. The ability to go back six months later and reshoot an entire scene <laughs> with the context of being like, we did this before. Let's not screw it up again. Yeah. yeah. And in definitely. a way it almost, I would imagine it's almost like the rehearsal for like the real thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. we did, we did a trial run. Now you come yeah. in with that knowledge. Exactly. And know how to do it. Cause right. we never really did a rehearsal. So it's like, that's our rehearsal. Which yeah. Is nice. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, some films that like came yeah. to mind oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as an audience others. member. Um, there's a movie. I if you guys have heard of this, like I will, I will give you ten dollars. Uh, it's a movie called "Hey, Stop Stabbing Me." Um, no. It's okay. Yeah, I've heard of it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's heard of this thing because I, okay, it's such a similar story to you guys. This is like early two thousands, and these group of friends got together over the summer. They were living in the same house together, and they shot like this little movie, and it's like a slasher comedy, and it's essentially about like this guy who moves into a house and. One of the roommates is he suspects one of the roommates is killing everybody else, but like, <laughs> oh, cool. it, it, and it's like super silly. And the guys who made it went on to write the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Oh, cool! What's and they the did, hell? They, did <laughs> they did Violent Night with um, oh, David Harbour. Yeah. We saw that. I, I like <laughs> no, that they, movie. <laughs> and, and they went on to make like these big Hollywood movies. Um, there's another movie called Dubro Party Massacre Three. Have you heard of this no. one? I think I actually have heard of that. Have you heard of Five Second Films? Yeah, yes. on YouTube. Yes. Okay, yes. so those guys made a feature film together oh, cool. very similar and it's like as if it's like an 80s slasher that's so awesome. they add all these effects where like throughout the film it'll like cut to these like random commercials that the tape accidentally like taped over oh, that's <laughs> and whatnot like they have like all these funny <laughs> gags awesome. greg sestero from the room makes a yeah, cameo yeah, yeah. Dude, like, like, like Pat oswald's in too. it oh. like um and that gave me a lot of similar vibes to your movie as well very cool. um that's so cool and then not only that but like the x movies like yes. ty west x Whoa. movies like you know the kind of grindhouse Take aesthetic because you yeah. have this little vignette over yeah. the film oh right? that's um, christian Whittemore made this thing look yeah yeah glorious. christian killed it in color the color the look of it he also did the he did the finishing did editing as finishing well. finishing editing and a uh a booger removal yes That's okay well, you, beautiful you, things you talked ever. about that before we started recording but what what's this booger removal what in a here? scene where the scene where like we call it the will and will Matt and christian, and romance. christian romance. romance scene. such a tender scene yes the there's this there's like a close-up shot of christian it's like and, a beautiful slow motion push yeah in and, and his he's hair like, is blowing and, and he's like yeah. kissing falling. whatever there was a Either fake snow or a booger in his nose. Yeah. And for the longest time, we were like, we got to get that out. It's kind of just there. <laughs> and one day, Witty went in and removed it. And oh, it's my God. vanished. It's obvious to him. But yeah. if there's enough love online and people want us we'll, to release the booger, release the cut, booger cut. Like, cut. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, but but no, Christian, like, seriously, like, change the film because that was his color. like in yeah. the these titles that are behind us too like right. he gave it like a cool look with everything we call it like the slime kind of yeah it, it no. looks like very like stretched it's cool and, and cool. with like the copyright and everything like yeah. I, it, it definitely That's harkens cool. back yeah to those, and i think um, it, 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 at first we were like oh is it like we can do it to like hide things but then we're like no it's kind of like the aesthetic it's like we don't really need to hide much it like fits. it's very just like it fits the aesthetic of yeah it. yeah and I, and I think also like in our group like just being as goofy as we are as well kind the of the whole gang. aesthetic yeah the goofy gang yeah which is nice is uh we're like when thinking of like the production company we're like well what is it? like box fort entertainment box fort productions box fort whatever we're like no, it's it's a picture. Yeah, this is a, this is a box <laughs> for picture. Box for empirical picture, empirical yeah. picture, yeah. which I love. It just it just <laughs> elevates it so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we wrap this up, I want to ask you guys like biggest lessons learned from this movie yeah. that you're going to take on to future projects or just in your own life. Like it could be personal lessons learned. Like, um, I would say being prepared. Yeah, because I think we were. Land. I would think we were like prepared to an extent yeah but like even when we started shooting we had like 15 pages written yeah and then like an outline for the rest <laughs> so it was very like so it was pretty haphazard and that was why we had to reshoot things but i think like just being prepared and even like we were saying like with your friends mm-hmm. you need to 
there's a reason all this stuff is in place for movies where it's like someone is in AD telling you to like, Hey, you only have one more take of this. Right. Cause we got to move on. Yeah. You got to do it. Like, even if it's your best friends in the world, you do need someone to take yeah. those roles on and like, yeah. impl- and like put stuff in place so that you have like a goal that you can reach and you have like mm-hmm. things that you can hit so that it, it goes well and goes smooth. And it's not just like, Oh, we could do it tomorrow. Oh, we okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Which we certainly did a lot. A lot, but I think <laughs> I think at a certain point it definitely was getting to all of us where we were just like we need to have a system in place so that like we can get this done in a professional way, in a smart way. And it mm-hmm. I mean, it got there towards the it end. It got there and it's totally it's it's all worth it and it's all and I'm glad we did it, but it's yeah, I mean that's just also working with friends too. Right, right. Because no one wants to, no one wants to be the guy that's like, "Hey, yeah. we're doing it this way. Like, this it, is my idea. I'm doing this. I'm doing like, we only have one more take. Like, if everyone's having fun, it's kind of a buzzkill if someone does exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. You're yeah. also shooting a movie, and you need someone to do that because like that's right. just how it goes. It's yeah. tough being confrontational in those settings. Yeah, too. and I'd yeah. imagine like you're balancing feelings as well because totally, like, any creative totally. pursuit, it's like such a personal endeavor yeah. that like you don't want to like like you said you don't want to be a buzzkill exactly you, know, you don't want to yeah. like hurt anybody's feelings but like it is important for someone to be there watching over everything Definitely. and stepping up to yeah be like okay. and like when we reshot stuff and we're like okay we have a schedule we have a script we have this yeah we've practiced we've rehearsed whatever it all went super smooth right yeah, like, it did. okay gotcha awesome um and we're all friends to this day so yeah that, <laughs> it all worked out no no bridges burned in this yeah. process yeah. with the friendship thing too i think it was all like we all came into we're like the friendships were important than the movie like if the movie has to die for if like if it's killing the yeah. friendship like we got to kill the movie gotcha. yeah, yeah. But okay. we, we got through it but you know kind of on like the physical preparedness like mental preparedness as well like you know going forward with the next project like obviously we're gonna do all the things we didn't do like you know have a script yes Um, yeah but you know i think also preparing everyone in the group for what it's actually going to entail Mm -hmm. like everyone was really a trooper and really came through at the end but like there were definitely points in time where we were like hey like you know we need you to do this thing right and they were like i don't want to fucking do this thing like this is the last thing i want to do right now like i have my work i have my life i need to work but like yeah at the end of the day everyone like came through yeah, we but worked around time, everyone's yeah. schedules. Like, no, yeah, like you said, no bridges were burned, but it was definitely yeah. like, hey, like, I can't do this now, but I could do it in a week. Yeah. And you're yeah. Like, just, oh, okay, that works. <laughs> yeah, just being yeah, able yeah. to compromise with everybody's personal yeah, lives and exactly. whatnot, I bet, was a lot to juggle. No, no one's getting paid for this. Like, yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah per- personally, for me, too, one thing just to do for other stuff is like, um, you know, this was, I, whatever, you know, I studied directing in college i yeah. never learned anything about producing yeah um i you know I'd, I'd done a couple of ads maybe if that right but you know one big thing that i'd never learned or knew about was like clearance procedures and <laughs> contract law um which, yeah. which I, is, I don't even know no, what you're talking yeah. about when well, you like, say that technically like, <laughs> before we started we said it should have signed all this paperwork and we were like Oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we, like, we, like, yeah, like, there should be a contract in place for the film for, like, you know, if something happens, what happens, or like, who gets what credit. And, yeah. like, we literally got that contract this morning. Uh, wow. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, you know, also like, music rights. Yeah, music rights. Very, but th- this movie a year ago was had like a Celine Dion song completely different. Really? And then we were wow. like, what's the worst they could do? And then they were like, no. $100,000? Yeah, and we're like, lot. that's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah, like compliance. Like you need to make sure that every single thing that appears in frame in your movie and that is said in your movie, you have the rights to talk about. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Like all the all these like little things that like you don't even think about. Like, I mean, why that's, would this that's be a big drag deal? of it of like, we made a movie with our best friends. It was fucking awesome. We had the best time in the world doing it. Then after the fact, you're like, oh, fuck. Okay, we got to like go through yeah. like the slog. Of There's like, all these logistical yeah. stuff Definitely. that you got to tackle. It's Which easy. is the not fun part. Yeah. But. That's the produ- That's what the producing yeah. is for. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like even like us using our real names in the movie, like we essentially in the in the contract that we all like, there's a little like line that's just essentially like you are you are playing a character that is not based upon yourself. Like you are like 
separating the a two from one another, yeah. a caricature. Really? So that one, so that nobody who sees the movie would misrepresent one of the characters. Like, whatever. Like, I'll be the first to say, like, my character is a fucking moron. <laughs> um, so, like, you know, obviously, like, I... Played so well. Thank Played you. so yeah, well. Definitely not what I'm like in real life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but no, like definitely like in a way that wouldn't misrepresent the fact and, you know, be like, hey, like this person is this real life person. Like, no, yeah. we are not. Like those are two separate entities. It's and crazy. Yeah. Like we had no idea. And it was very, we're yeah. very thankful also to our distributor, yeah. Giant. Yeah. Who giant Pictures. Us, and they just like saw something in this which is really cool yeah and like are helping us a lot with all this stuff they've been really awesome and just yeah. like helping us because they are people that do Definitely. this all the time and they're just like here's the paperwork you need exactly. here's what we need to clear it and wow. like walking us through that mm-hmm. and thankfully they gave us time to yeah. let this because you know yeah th- there's a, we had a like i was saying a huge thing with all the music rights that was like completely changed the movie oh yeah at one point I'd imagine. yeah yeah. I've always been scared away. Like I remember in film school, they very much scared us away from trying to do anything music licensing yes. related. Yes, and then we had a few in the group. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? Yeah. Were what? you with the Matt Johnson thing? No, no. So, okay. So our freshman year. Yeah. Which is before your freshman year. Yeah. Uh, still, a, still a little high schooler. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> just a we lad. had this director, Matt Johnson, come okay. in who did The Crazies, Operation Avalanche, most Blackberry, recently Blackberry. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, he's the guy. Blackberry. He plays like the crazy dude with the glasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and he also directed the film. And so he came in and gave a talk. Like this was like two weeks in. And the one thing myself and Christian Hurley took away from this yeah. was he said um, – He's like, you never need to pay for rights to music in your movie. He's like, just put whatever song you want in. He goes, I've screened both of my movies at Sundance without having the rights to the songs. He goes, you can worry about the songs after you get distribution. He goes, but don't even worry about it for your short. Like, your short film is never going to make money. So why would you pay thousands of dollars for the thing? And like, Which, it, fair. He's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, then, but then we got... But then a distribution and they were like, okay, so like how much is this going to cost? And we were like, fuck, we got to yeah. change everything. Yeah. And, and I will say like... In whoever, like, what, there were a few songs, like, Celine Dion's team, we had, like, My Heart Will Go On in there. Yeah. Which, like, very nice to them. They came back and they were like, hey, like, we'll let you use it in a festival. But, like... Which is super cool. Which They're is like, super cool. No yeah, charge. that's awesome. Yeah. But they were also just fully, like, they were like, but we want to let you know we've seen the movie and we know you can't afford this, so we're just not even going to quote a money. Like, quote a, quote a number. Oh, my They're God. Just like, and then, just, yeah, just, no. Totally blunt. And then, and which, then, yeah, yeah you know, which is... Better than being like, well, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then we had some other songs that they were just like, yeah, I won't go over which exact song, but like, they were like 60,000. They're like 60,000. We're like, okay, well, we can't do that. So we got to find something else. But thankfully, there's awesome services now for people like us and other filmmakers that like you can buy songs for pretty cheap and own the rights to them and use them in your movie. Wow. Yeah. And also, also I just made stuff. Yeah. Max made made a couple songs. Like the guys came together and they made a few like really goofy songs. Yeah. Like one song called like shit in my ass. (laughs) I did see, I did see that in the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Which is beautiful. Uh, Uh, And like coming soon to, uh, Spotify streaming. and Apple Music. Yeah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna have some fun uh, music yeah. stuff. For and this. then you know we also had like our friend Jack Larkin who did some of like the additional audio help on the film. Yeah. Um, we had this like for the longest time we had this music that to what we believed we would get was all written by Ben's, I believe Ben's great uncle. Okay. Um, and his aunt still owned the rights to the. So own part of the rights. Right. It was not all of the rights. And mm. for the particular bands in which we were trying to get, they were like, no, like we don't, we don't want this to be used for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. And so we had to cut those songs. It was just out of our It was just budget. out of our budget. Yeah. And, yeah. And, or just out of our like window of time in which we had to get this stuff done. Like they were just dragging their feet. We're like, we need an answer by Friday. So let's just like take it out. Yeah. But to, you know, Jack Larkin. <laughs> We were like, hey, man, like, we need a song for the ending of the movie. In, like, and 48 the first hours. Credits. And really? We, yeah, we wow. needed it in two days. And, <laughs> like, can you do something? And he came back with the song a Banquet much better of Desire, song. which is yeah. so good. It's yeah. totally In two insane. days. Two, two days, days. turn around. Wow. It was crazy, though, because, like, the whole movie is about, like, the guys eat tainted meat. And we, uh, I forgot who was visiting, but we did, like, a huge Korean barbecue night. Yeah. And he fully was, like... That is what inspired this song. I felt like shit. Yeah. And then you guys texted me and he was like, I'm channeling the the meat sweats. Yeah, the song oh was originally God. called Meat Sweats. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun like that too. And I was just like, you know, as someone who wants to make music and score things, I was just like, okay, there's a bunch of websites where I can like yeah. 
find samples of these old like yeah like songs from the 50s and then like reformat them for what we need right so that was very helpful of just like and then you know and then lastly too i mean like bands of people and our friends like you know there's this there's the talk cards which are awesome there's this dylan's friends Friends, band knock sinister uh christian hurley's like one of his best friends from growing up this guy clark um ever midas dritty uh, pope dritty pope who lives in, so who we're lives just in like who, is peop- who are people that we know that like have music that we like and can use for this movie we're just trying to pool yeah everything just hit them up and be like, i mean that's the uh, again like, yeah. like that's yeah. awesome it's better with numbers to like have multiple people asking multiple people for things i think that's and then where it pools your together. team came in handy because yeah. then you have this whole network of exactly. different yeah. resources that you can tap into at each of us whenever a problem arose one of us at least knew one person that who could, could like help. come in for wow. assist that's awesome yeah that's that's, a, that's I, I, there was like thing. few places that we were just like we don't know what to do <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd imagine, but yeah. that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about this movie. And this is the, the kind of the note I want to end on. It's just, it's like such a labor of love between like a group of friends coming together and doing something. It's a special thing because usually you see these auteur pieces, you know, where it's like one singular vision. And this is so cool where it's like true collaboration between friends. Yeah. I, I think that's yeah. like, what is a huge selling part of this movie? What people are really going to connect yeah. with. Yeah, thank um, you. Thank but, you very much. But this, this, this is out. This is out. It's out. It's, yeah. it's out. Where can people watch this? April second. It it's available on uh, Amazon, Apple, Canopy, Kinema, uh, Google Play, um, Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. Okay. Uh, not Sony. What's up with that? <laughs> um, uh, I think uh, you can pre-order a DVD, DVD or a Blu-ray. Or Blu-ray. Ooh, which, which I with, will be doing. Which come with lots of bonus features. Yeah, there's fun, a director's the commentary, doc. which is very funny if I do say so. We myself. are all <laughs> every single person who's on this movie. Every is person on the who commentary. made the movie. Oh, that's on it. so. I awesome. edited it all together. There's like a fun little like behind the scenes short doc. Yeah, yeah. about there's, how we made it with some like footage. It's like mm-hmm. seven minutes with some bloopers and stuff. There's and a then, music video for yeah. Dritty Pope's song "Eat the Meat." Oh man! And then so which is a song in the credits. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then there's our deleted alternate scenes. So like you can see kind of some of the scenes that we cut and out. And those are like dated. Some versions. of them are dated, okay. which is like okay, this is the original scene when the guys get to the cabin. This was 2020, and then it's like oh, the one in the movie. It was 2022. I'm exactly. so excited yeah. to see that because just hearing this, throughout this whole conversation, thinking like, man, I just I want to see like what the original vision was like yeah. and just compare that to yeah. what. Well, it it's ended so up funny being. too because like I mean, coming from me too, my like main post thing was the score and yeah. so like the initial score we had through it was i believe from it comes at night mm-hmm. and we were just like <laughs> okay and like originally you watch it now and you're like that works for what that was but then now you see it like it would mm-hmm. not have worked at all for what this thing is now no yeah. the, the synths are so good it's oh, just like oh thank you yeah. but yeah it's very it's it's there are many versions of this, which is fun. Yeah. So, but yeah. but yeah, I'm so excited for this release. I'm excited for people to see it. I'm excited Thank for you. you guys. I'm excited to see what Box Fort does next. Thank, Thank you. you. This yeah. This is awesome. Tell your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, Tell check out friends. physical media. Physical media. Physical <laughs> media. <laughs> and and if we go viral enough somehow, it's coming to a theater near you. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. We'll try. We're trying to do as many screenings as possible. So. We're going to do a little road yeah. show eventually. We're going to figure that out. This, Even if we got to pay for it ourselves, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, all their links are going to be down below. And uh, thanks again for tuning in to Stacked. We'll see you next week. Wait, wait. Oh. Say bye. Say bye, dear Evan Hansen. Bye, dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs>